Welcome to RMI's Advantage video series. In this video, I will demonstrate the jobs functionality that is included with RMI's Advantage solution. Jobs are used to keep track of all the costs you incur related to a specific project. This can be internal labor, outsourced labor, consumption of any parts used in service, as well as rental activity. Let's take a look at a job card in Advantage. Here we see the general information pertaining to this job, the number we've assigned the job, the description, as well as the customer that we created the job for, in this case, Marshall's Department Store. We also have the ability to store comments about a particular job. Here we see a comment that's specific to this customer's request for our conveyor system. We also, on the right, have the ability to recognize who is the person in our organization responsible for this job. Under the rental order number field, we could use this field to represent which rental order do we want to push these job billings to if we were charging with rental activity. On the posting tab, we have the ability to identify the job posting group, WIP method, and status. The job posting group is used to identify which jail accounts are used in the calculation of WIP, or work in process. We also have the ability to specify a variety of WIP methods, as you can see here. In this example, we are using the completed contract method. Completed contract method simply means that we are going to defer all of our revenue and costs until the job has been completed. We know the job has been completed when the status changes from order to completed. And here you can see the various statuses a job may be in. On the duration tab, we have general information such as the job creation date and the, the suggested starting and ending dates for this job. On the foreign trade tab, we have the ability to capture multi-currency in the event you're doing business in multiple cu currencies. The whip and recognition tab are used when we calculate our work in process and review those entries so that we can then post them to the general ledger. Now I'm going to go ahead and define the buttons at the bottom, and in this case I'm going to work from right to left. The planning button is where we can see any resources that have been allocated to this job, or any resource group allocations that have been assigned to this job. The prices button allows us to specify special pricing for resources, items, or GL accounts when related to this job. The functions button allows us to copy this job. In the event we were setting up a similar conveyor system for another customer, we could copy the job so we would not have to enter all of the same information again. The WIP button is where we actually go ahead and run activities to calculate WIP and to post WIP to GL. With each of these selections, we can see the entries that are created and then see them on the WIP and Recognition tab. The Job button allows us to see all of our jobs in the list view, our comments, dimensions, ledger entries, and we can also attach documents to a job. For example, we may attach the blueprints for this building or any necessary permits, and then we have the ability to open print or send these documents right from this window. What I'm going to do now is go back to the job button and look at the job task lines. The job task lines represent all of the different phases of this job. In this case we see four. We have a fixed fee job which is going to represent all of our billings and we also see tasks for our internal labor, our outsourced labor, and any parts that are used in consumption or we're consuming these parts for this job. We could set up as many job tasks as necessary and even include a job task for rentals if we were including any rentals with this job. The job posting group, if you remember, came from the posting tab of the job card and we can set this on a line by line basis. Again, this is just a look up into that field we saw prior. Next, we're gonna look at the next set of fields, which are the schedule, total cost, and total price. These, these schedule fields are synonymous with budgeting. So this is what we expect our total cost and our total price to be for this project. We can also see usage. This is going to be actual cost and actual price posted. Next we see contract, total cost and total price, which is going to represent our billing. This is what we're actually going to bill the customer. And the last two fields show what have we already billed as far as cost and prices. We can actually drill into these fields to see the entries that make up 
these contract billings. And similarly, we can drill into the schedule lines and see our budget line. I'm going to go and head to the functions button and select edit planning lines. And I can see that information displayed in a little different manner. Here I see the first line, which represents my budget or my schedule, total cost of $2,500 and a total amount of $7,500. And below that we see two contract lines for different dates. Um, what I've done here is I've split the total amount in half so as to not bill the customer everything up front. To push to the sales order, we simply run this function, choosing OK to create a new sales order. And once we click OK, we can actually drill right back to that sales invoice and post this. And here we see half that amount being billed to the customer as of the, the posting date we've specified. Now we'd be able to go ahead and post any WIP if necessary, and this is going to remove our revenue into a deferred account from the job posting group. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and close everything and open up the job journal. The job journal is where we're going to post all of our internal time related to this job. We see the posting date, which represents the day the work was performed, and we enter a document number and the job number, and then we need to make sure we're choosing the correct job task number. In this case, we've chosen 1100. The resource RS stands for Ryan Sullivan, and you'll notice we've also created a batch for Ryan Sullivan. So we can create multiple batches for each of our technicians who are working on jobs. We see he worked eight hours on these days, and now we can go ahead and post this back to the job. I'll go ahead and close this and reopen the job. And if we look at the task lines, we can now see that we have usage for cost and price for our internal labor. Just keeping in mind that we're not billing for actual, this is a fixed fee job, and we're billing based on our contracted total price. Oftentimes, we have to do outside labor as well, or purchase parts for a specific job. What I've done is I've created a purchase invoice, and on this purchase invoice, we've referenced $1,000 of outside labor, as well as uh, a variety of different parts that we need to use on this job. We can see that because we have the job number referenced, as well as different job task numbers for representing outside labor and parts. Just go ahead and post this back to the job. And now if we take a look back at the job, we'll see under our two task lines for outside labor and parts, amounts in both the usage, total cost, and total price fields. Now for my outside labor, I could have chosen to enter a price. However, since I'm not billing for actual, I chose to leave this field blank. Now we see we can look at the statistics for this job and we can see under the different areas for resources, items, GL accounts, as well as rentals, the scheduled usage, contract, and invoiced amounts for both price and cost, and the calculation of that will give us profit. So we can see here our profit, our projected contract profit is $5,000, and that is our contract price minus our contract cost. This would also include any rental activity had we posted a rental order assigned to a job. The last step would be to calculate WIP, and we can do this from the WIP button by choosing the option for Calculate WIP. Once we've reviewed the WIP entries, we would post the WIP to the GL. That would actually update our general ledger and all of the resulting transactions would take place. And once the job is completed, we would set the status to completed. Upon doing so, another warning message or a pop-up will appear telling us to run WIP one last time. And what the last WIP calculation will do is it will finally move all of our costs and revenue from our deferred accounts into our recognized cost and recognized revenue accounts. This concludes the session on jobs within the Advantage system. For more information, visit our website at www.rmiusa.com or give us a call at 800-252-5011.